particular photograph you've just seen, this one here, um, is one that's become very popular on my Facebook page. It got more likes than I think everything, anything's ever had, including my paintings. So that's a little bit worrying, but anyway, um, as it's been very mixed weather, I've decided to come in and do another studio piece. And I've done several now of cafe scenes, street scenes, showing you how to use the sponge rollers. Uh, what you may not realise is how wonderful they are for doing things like this as well. So I'm going to build up the background of this scene with the sponge rollers, just to show you how that works in acrylics and then how we can use brushes afterwards to gradually build up the picture and the details and the textures. See if I can find a sea sponge as well or two to, to use on texturing for the leaves if I can. Now I'd like to work from the background forward so I want to start off with um, these soft mid-tones throughout and then gradually go to my darks and then come back with putting the lighter colours over the top. So again for this job as we've done before I'll take a nice big stiff brush to pick up the paint and put it into the mixing palette for uh, the roller. Now I showed you before about the way that we mix the paint and, th and then roll the roller through the brush uh, uh, and the paint to get all of the paint out. Let's take myself a nice very light blue to turquoise colour to start with. Put a little bit of warmth into it just for the background here. Try and find some of these cools before I make them a little bit warmer. I need to just use the um, wet the roller slightly. Don't get too wet just enough to get it going. So I'm going to roll my roller through the brush now to the paint and we'll start off to find some of this lovely cool green going on behind here. And you see the sort of mottled effect we can get with it as well which will also help us to gain the effect of these uh, trees behind here. Very cool bluey green at the moment to build up. I want to lose all of this canvas, that's very important to me. I don't want any white canvas left behind. I'll take some lemon yellow now and whack that into there. A bit of water just to get things flowing. I only want a thin sort of coat at the moment so I can gradually build up into texture. It is way, so way back here, it's slightly cooler. It's lighter than that. And that's, when the colour is on your brush or on your roller, whichever, Use it if you see it somewhere else. Don't take it off your brush and then have to put it on there again afterwards. It's ridiculous. While it's on there, like a jigsaw, put the right pieces in the right places. Move it one to another immediately. These subtle changes of colour. I just want to build these up first of all. What I'm going to do is go across where the sky is there a bit. Just uh, put the blue over there in a minute. I just want to give it a coat. And again I've got to draw my roller through it to maximise the mixed, even mixtures of colours, even though I want some accident going on. So that pinky, really light pinky colour is going to come in here. Is it anywhere else? I mean actually whilst we're doing this we know it must be reflecting as well. So let's bring some of that pink into these. But don't forget a lot of them are vertical marks as well as horizontal right down through into there. Just the, the original green. We change these colours as we go along. Right, I want to go to a much stronger turquoise blue now. I'm going to wash my brush all together and just come back into that sky. And that sky will then come down into the foreground in the water. That lovely yellow green, yellow blue turquoise happening. And I want to go a little bit more there. I want to go a little bit warmer, otherwise that turquoise is not going to show us turquoise, so I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine now and just warm it up a little bit. Here. A bit more, a little bit of warmer ultramarine, which is a much, much warmer blue. And bowl that gently into here to get the feeling of a warmer sky going on. We can make lovely paintings just with such a big, cruel, to crude looking tool as this. But in fact, the sponge roller isn't nearly as crude as you might think. A lot of wonderful effects with it. Go back to intermediate now. I'm going to take some blue, quite strong blue, and some uh, emerald green. Start to make some much darker greens for the background. 
a little bit more purple into them just to bring them back a bit. And let's try and get this variety of mid greens before we go to the darker ones in the background. Here for instance, where they come up and through. We just get a bit of texturing now of the leaves happening. Look. We just use the roller to get these textures. With the greens as I go on, I just want to get this canvas covered. And then I can really start to put more individual correct colours in rather than just a general green here and there or tones, trying to leave some different difference in my mark so I can see where I'm going to be for later on. grain of this, it's a good canvas this one, it's a more expensive one and um, I want to obviously get rid of the grain of it as soon as I can, I just want the effects of, of light and tone to be able to pull the individual colour shapes out later a bit more I'm going to just finding my lights and darks here There's lovely and very interesting colours going on as I continue to try and find my background ones warmer just here for instance. Let's say get all these colours established and then I'll be able to uh, build them up more carefully. and blue, some darks going again, some very deep blue and a bit of lesbian into it. Let's see if we can try and find a few more of these darks again, which we've lost. Easy to see in here. Tremendously dark in there. I don't like the way that the Okay, that gives us our, our basics. I just want to take some of that dark and get these branches in here which are in the way. I can't quite get the roller at the moment. I'd like to use the midterms over the top again. So just wash up my palette and stuff for the moment. Take a little bit of a wee break now and uh, I'll carry on and do a bit more of these midterms I think. first I think I do want to just get those working a bit better. Just run those gently into the background as they are here. They might have been there. I can always soften them back later if I've done too much but I, I can see quite a lot of pink in here.
second day on this and uh, I'm considering putting a couple of figures in here on the left later on. So we'll see about that uh, when the time comes. At the moment we're going to start working back up into these lovely colours. Let's look at some of the more brown. Play with these lovely bits of sunlight that are coming down and across. And if we play the lights against the darks, the warms against the cool, see. This is a very warm, mossy green at the moment that I'm using, obviously, and to play against those warms. Look at the difference in those three browny to more yellowy um, greens, and right through to these more bluer, cooler, more acidic greens. Let's start looking at the blues back into here as well. Take a bit of ultramarine there. Let's really start to play some of these beautiful colours. Look for them. We really look for these colours that are in here now. At that time I did, I've been using fairly straightforward colours until now. I think it's time that I started to see more colour in here. So if I put warmer blues up here, darker blues as well, they're going to affect these colours around them. Maybe add a little bit of saline to it, to just to feel these blues down here a bit more. Really beautiful colours what of uh, sky and light between trees coming down here. Working with two brushes at the moment, a little round um, number four and my number eight uh, filberts. Just picking up some of these blues at the moment and uh, just start putting some warms back in too in a second. I'm going to go back and look at some of the warms to bring those cools out, especially around here. Let's uh, have a look at a bit of yellow ochre going in there. We haven't used the warms much yet. This time we did. I'm going to take some alizarin crimson and get some warmer colour still going on in here. Really. And it'll make the other bluer greys come out more and give that coolness to the water. Look at that, look. These subtle colours, subtle colour changes here. You really, really look for colour. Crunches over the rock. And the moss just a little bit down here. And look how that brings out that. <clears throat> the differences in that, uh, in those warms and cools. I really pick up on these, these colours as I go on. Started with very muddy colours, but I want to try and get back to pure colour happening in here. I a lot of building up gradually, this. That are happening in here as well. We've got a lot more warms and pure colours happening in here yet that I haven't managed to explore. Colours. It's just a few strokes like that can make such a difference. We've really got to keep looking all of the time for these colours. I've got the lights, very light uh, highlights to go in there yet, so it's not a worry. And uh, hours and hours of film going into this one, isn't there? Look 
come back and make this lighter turquoise green yellow that I what happens when we do eventually get to those lovely light highlights of, of the whites on the, at the end of the picture. Not the end yet by any means but some very light blues to put in here too yet. If I start just to give you an idea as well of the same if I take that same very light, those very light sparkles and just start to bring them into here now, you can see how they'll work against this. Got a very, very light blue actually rather than uh, green. and get the highlights mixed up because there are warms and cools in both the darks and the lights. It's very important that we remember that to play one against the other. And these highlights are very important because they'll bring out the colours around them. See how I'm working both cool and warm highlights here, not just creams, also the as you can start to see now as I'm doing it, as I'm bringing these little bits of cream into it to capture the light. Okay, we'll leave that and come back to that later. Well, I've been off to uh, Chateau to have a nice uh, all-you-can-eat buffet Chinese with the pal. And whilst I was there, I managed to pick up some more sponges for myself because I haven't got any sea sponges here. So these textural ones hopefully will be very useful and I can use them up in this actual painting uh, when I come to doing the little fine leaves in the background and so on. So I really want to not get photographic, but I want to get this full of light and texture. Let's move on then and continue. Right. Um, my two brushes that I'm still using, the same ones, my number eight and my uh, my number four round, number eight filbert, and I want to work up a bit more of these golds still, just a fraction more. I'm going to take a little bit now of cadmium orange and a wee bit of chrome yellow. I just want to see. What happens? A little bit of yellow into that, bit more orange. I just want to get this orange a little bit stronger. Leave it all yellow again. Still not quite yellow enough there. Don't want it too orange, although I'm going to go quite red just here in a minute. But let's just bring in these oranges a fraction more just to give that sunshine down there. And of course, if this colour is happening here, the chances are it's going to be reflecting in the water slightly, so we've got to just bring them down and blend them in a bit down here. And I'm going to keep playing these cools against warms back into the background just subtly and bits of highlights and to play the warm against the cools. See how I'm delicately playing these very light colours and warms one against another to try to get the effect of shimmering. It's not just one colour, it's never just one colour, it's one colour against another which is helping to give this effect. I get the greens going, I think that will make more sense. At the moment it's not quite making the sense I need. 
So I'm going to mix some Prussian and Berziana now. I'm trying to get a much darker, maybe put a bit of purple into it, a much darker colour there. I'm still not wanting to use black yet. See how dark we can go with these colours. There we are, that's a lovely dark warm. Now let's see if I get this in here what happens. It's almost black, you see. It's warmer and it gives me these lovely darks for these rocks behind here. And back to the warm green, so back to my yellow ochre and a wee touch of green and we'll just and more green and we'll just uh, work on this bit here just to see if we can get these greens a bit warmer. That mossy feeling that we haven't quite got yet and down here with the lights catching that and down to the water's edge there. Right, we're about ready to start on the, um, the greens at last. So I may go down a brush because this one is a little bit large for the brush strokes that I want to use. So I'm going to go down to about a quarter inch I think Phil, but quite a large painting this so I can use fairly large brush strokes because people are going to have to get back from it to see it. No doubt about that. I haven't got that too far across. I need to have that set of leaves a little bit far this way. I may have to take some of it, some across to here a bit more to balance the painting out. Watch it all the time. We're getting these reflections. We've got water reflections in water to make sure that we keep and get. If any of the values change, you've got to come back into it and get those values in. To get these figures in too, I was thinking about the two figures in the, this area here, whether they're going to work or not. I need to be looking at uh, how green is this and how yellow is it. I need to get those established at some stage soon. I think I'd like to look at establishing these uh, figures soon. The greens are good, but I may well paint these out later. I just want to see the effect of figures in there. Just watch what will happen if I do uh, do this. I don't understand like a sore thumb either. But I'm looking at two figures here. Just standing, giving perspective, giving scale to the thing, and one figure is just up on the rocks here. Oh, that paint's just drying on my brush before I even get it off. So look now, and her leg, back of her, she's about there, and she comes, and wipe it out with a bit of water, then come in again. It's the tissue just to. Take it down until I've adjusted it and decide if that's what I actually want. So that's where she was, and without deciding, it should be a bit lower, maybe down here. Even that's. And we'll take a little bit of magenta. Back on. Just want to hint at the being children here. I don't want to get into too much bother with it. Take a little bit of the very, very light cream that we were using earlier. yellow. just want to catch the sunlight on the edge. 
of her hair and her shoulders and her back. I'm talking of cools and warms, let's go for that very light cool light blue now. And just touch a turquoise into it, keep it cool and just put some cool light across her back here and up over her head. I want the figure as small as that. Trunks on, we'll just into those. Does it detract from the picture too much? Hard to say at this stage. Yeah, I think they're quite nice there, they do a bit of scale and they're not going to take over the painting too much, I don't think. Right, we've we'll established where they are, don't need to do too much more on that as long as I've established them. Right, there we are. I think we'll leave it at that for today because the light is too peculiar and I just want to see actually having done that. I want to I need to just indicate down here that those figures are even up there. That would be nice just to have a slight bit of reflection going on from those two figures. Take a look at those figures we've just done. You can see I, I tried to fit them in with the landscape and do the reflections. Right, well I think it's time to uh, carry on the brushwork on this one. Had a nice morning's fishing this morning. Got some fresh air. It's beautiful down there. Much more orangey, yellow greens happening here. Bits of reflected light that are coming into here. Let's just take a look at some of these finer pink lines going through here. See if we can just catch the light a bit more on them. Let's just take a look at some of these finer pink lines going through here. See if we can just catch the light a bit more on them. Well, 
but I think it's time to have a go with a bit of sponge and try and get some of these textures into the background now. So I'm going to start with some darks actually rather than lights. I'll make up some very deep greens and we'll go with those first. Which would be almost impossible to do with a brush unless you're going to go over and over and over again. So it's very useful to dabble on with the sponge. And if it doesn't work then I've got to go back in with the brushes again and tidy up. Possibly even a, a little bit at the very top of the canvas there. Time now to look at the, the lighter colours that need texturing up here. Take some very light yellow green and a bit of white into there. Don't overdo the thing and start to make it look too textural, but I uh, do want to get light and life into it. So bigger, <coughs> bigger chunks of paint on it. I'm not really going to put much heavier paint to give me larger marks back here. And see what we can get coming through the through the girls there, for instance. I don't want to say, don't want to overdo it. It'd be so easy to do that with a sponge because it's so simple. Um, but it, it is plenty of yard. Then that's the trouble with it becomes a bit silly and a bit obvious. Don't just finish the painting and say that's it. It's uh, got the quick effects, we'll leave it. No, it doesn't quite work like that. Just quick effects. I've had enough of those. I've had a, there's another artist called Peter Wood and I get sent his stuff year in year out. It's just co convey about commercial special effects. People seem to think it's lovely but it's nothing to do with me. I don't mind using special effects if we don't overdo them and it doesn't take over the painting. Right, I need to wash the sponge and go back to the brushes. So I'm going to have to come back with some branches and darker lines to pull it out, I think, next. Well, I don't want to do much more really, I think I've got the essence of it and I should really be enough. Yeah, I'm going to finish it at that. I'm going to paint outside again shortly. <coughs> the weather's getting better, it should be good. More of a studio piece, a bit more finished than I normally do, but I'm trying to keep my looseness amongst it. More texture and a lot of techniques for you there. Right, it's had a thin coat of arms now to bring the colours out. But hopefully you've enjoyed this film. <laughs>